We've described adverse childhood experiences and how they can have powerful, lifelong impacts on our health. In my opinion, the official list of adverse childhood experiences doesn't go far enough to describe all of the different ways that we can experience trauma and adverse experiences throughout life. If you were to start thinking through things that go on in our lives that we just kind of consider normal and yet they can change this vibrational frequency, change the emotions, get hard coded, get trapped. What are some things that you think people don't often think about? Well, you know, there are there are the obvious emotional experiences, you know, being bullied, for example, um, experiencing the divorce of your parents, um, losing a parent, going through, uh, uh, if, we're, if we're talking specifically about childhood, you know, uh, there are, I mean, going through breakups, you know, like in fifth grade, I mean, things like that, you, you're in love for five or six days and it, and the emotions are so powerful and so intense um, we experience things in very, very profound ways when we're, when we're that young. And, um, the interesting thing about it is that then, uh, those emotional experiences can result in the development of emotional baggage, trapped emotions that then we deal with for the rest of our lives. And we don't necessarily know, uh, in fact, we usually don't have any idea that what's happening now to us is being caused sometimes in whole or sometimes in part by those experiences that we went through when we were young. In fact, to give you an idea, um, I want to share a story with you. I went to, uh, I was doing, teaching an event once and uh, at the beginning of this workshop, uh, I had been standing by the door and greeting people as they were coming in. And I met this young woman who came with her mother. So a while later, I asked for a volunteer and uh, this young woman came up. She's about 21 years old. And uh, so I started asking questions. And we used muscle testing to get yes and no answers from the subconscious mind, from the binary computer that we each have within us. And um, I found that she had a trapped emotion. The emotion was uh, forlorn, which on the emotion code chart is in column A, row one right here. And um, so... Uh, I needed to know more about it, uh, according to her subconscious. And so I started asking questions and it turned out that this had happened prior to age 10, prior to age five, it actually had happened during the first year of her life. And I thought, okay, nobody remembers anything from the first year of their life. But I said, do you remember anything about this? Oh, do you have any idea what this could have been? And she had no idea. And so I thought, okay, well, I wasn't expecting her to know anything. And I happened to look out at the audience and there's her mother and she's as white as a ghost, right? And she's got her hands kind of up covering her mouth and nose and her eyes are like saucers. And I said, hey, do you have any idea what this might be about? And she was really embarrassed, but she said that she thought maybe she did. She said that um, during those years, she used to use cloth diapers. And one day she accidentally pinned her daughter to her diaper and didn't know about it until she changed her the next time. And so here's this poor baby that's got this pin through her flesh, this safety pin. She's cr I mean, she must have been crying and crying and crying. It wasn't getting any help. And her mom must have been really overwhelmed. And so her mom was horrified to see what she'd done inadvertently. Well, the emotion that was overwhelming for that baby was the emotion of feeling forlorn, which is feeling all alone and hopeless and kind of desolate and no one was helping her. And that was the emotion that became trapped in her body. So I released that trapped emotion, which we do, we, we do with either a magnet or your hand just by swiping a few times down the middle of the back. And uh, that was it. She went back and sat down and I kind of forgot about it. Finished the workshop, went home. About 10 days later, I got an email from this girl's mother and she said, my daughter didn't tell you, but she's had a problem with her hip and her knee. Uh, they've been bothering her and she's had pain with them for about the last 10 years. And she said, 
uh, we've taken her to different people and nothing's really worked. But she said the moment that you release that trapped emotion of forlorn, or when she was pinned to her diaper, the pain in her hip and in her knees been completely gone, hasn't come back. And she said, I waited 10 days to see if this was real, uh, but it, it has not come back. And she said, not only that, uh, my daughter's feeling this new sense of lightness of being that she's never felt before. She's telling everybody about this. And so a couple of things important to realize from that. First of all, uh, because we can ask the subconscious mind about these trapped emotions, we're able to find things that otherwise would not be able to be detected, right? Her subconscious remembered this, but she had no conscious memory of it whatsoever. So that's a beautiful thing about the emotion. You can find things that you have completely forgotten or that you have no knowledge of at all because it happened maybe when you were in the womb or maybe you inherited it from an ancestor. Uh, the other thing that's really nice about this is that with the emotion code, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to really know. You don't have to dredge up experiences and re-experience and get re-traumatized about the rape that you went through or whatever it was that might've been really difficult. Uh, what we're doing with the emotion code is simply finding these energies and releasing them. And it's very fast. Most people can find and release a trapped emotion in less than a minute once they learn how to do it. 